Okay, welcome back. This is going to be a very brief lecture on subspaces, following up on the previous lecture about vector spaces. So the basic example is that R2 is contained in R3. So the xy plane is R2, and R3 is the xyz plane, and R2 uh, can be thought of as sitting inside R3 by just taking the xy plane, which is to say you take just the xy coordinates and you take the third coordinate to be 0. So R2 is a subset of R3, and this is a basic example of a subspace. R2 itself is a vector space, and so you have one vector space sitting inside another, and that's simply called a subspace. So R2 is a subspace of R3, and that's the basic example. So let's give uh, the actual definition. Suppose you have a vector space V, and uh, W is a subset. Okay, now it's important here that I said that W is a subset. That just means some collection of points inside this vector space. Not every subset is a subspace. There's a set of conditions that a subset has to satisfy to be entitled to be called a subspace. And that's the definition we're giving here. So what is it? We say that W is a subspace if what? Well, basically, if it's a vector space by, um, by itself, which is to say it's closed under scalar multiplication and vector addition coming from V. So in other words, what I said, what that means is that suppose you have uh, two vectors, v1 and v2, which are in W. Well, take their sum, v1 plus v2. Um, that's in V. That's the definition of a vector space. So, but I want to require that it actually be in W. That's not automatic, and that's the condition. You require the sum actually be in W. And similarly, if C is a scalar, and v is in w, then uh, c times v is in, again, that's automatically in v, but my requirement is that it be actually in w. So that's the definition of a subspace. So let's look at a couple of examples. So um, suppose v was r2. An example of a subspace is the vector 0. Um, if you add 0 to itself, you get 0. And if you multiply 0 times any scalar, you get 0, and that's all you need to know. So the 0-dimensional subspace. Um, take any line through the origin. This is another example. If you're in R2, take an arbitrary line through the origin. That is an example of a subspace. Uh, and then the, another possibility is all of R2. That's sort of obvious because the conditions automatically hold there. And that's all of the possibilities in R2. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at a uh, non-example. How can you have something which is not a subspace? Well, take a line not through the origin. Okay, This is not a subspace. It's a straight line, but it's not a subspace. Why isn't it a subspace? It must fail one of those conditions, or both of them. So let's see. If you add two vectors on this line, do you get another vector on the line? Let's see. Well, let's take sort of a random vector on this line. I'll label it here in red. Take this vector v. That's on the line. And take another vector w. That's on the line, and the vector point, these vectors are pointing from the origin to the points. If you add them, you get way out here, and that's not on the line anymore. V plus W is not on the line, so this is not a subspace. So subspaces are straight. They're flat, so to speak, but they also have to go through the origin. Um, something that's curved can't possibly be a subspace. That's an example, a parabola. And uh, any curve like this, even if it goes through the origin, if it's curved, it's not a subspace. That's easy to see. 
So one important point is that if you have a subspace, it uh, certainly has to contain the zero vector. Zero has to be in the subspace. And why is that? Well, that's because if you have a subspace, by definition, if it has a vector in it, w, you can always multiply that vector by zero. And that's still in the subspace by one of the properties, taking c is equal to zero. But zero times w is zero. So that says the, the definition of subspace implies that the zero vector has to be in w. So if you're ever asked to check whether something's a subspace or not, you should first check and see if it has the zero vector in it. And if it doesn't, it's not a subspace. OK, here's another example. Take the vectors in R3 where the sum of the coordinates is 0. Hmm, is this a subspace? So one way to say this is these are the vectors such that when you dot them with 1, 1, 1, you get 0. And another way to say that is you take this vector 1, 1, 1, and you draw its orthogonal complement, the, all the vectors perpendicular to that. I didn't draw it very well, but I hope you get the idea. It's a plane, the plane orthogonal to the vector 1, 1, 1, and that is a subspace. It contains the origin, and I'll let you check that if you add two such vectors, it still has this property. Another example is take the vectors which satisfy this linear equation. That is to say, the vectors which are uh, the orthogonal complement, or you take the dot product, with the vector 2 minus 1, 3, and you get 0. That's also a subspace. Uh, how about something like this? What if I ask for the vectors x, y, z, such that x plus y plus z is equal to 1? So uh, just like the first example, except on the right-hand side, I'm putting 1. So I'm taking vectors such that when you dot them with 1, 1, 1, you get 1. The answer is no. This is definitely not a subspace. It doesn't contain the origin. It fails the first test. If you plug in 0, 0, 0, that doesn't work. So this is uh, its a translated subspace. You take a subspace that goes through the origin and you move it. But when you do that, it's no longer a subspace. Let's look at a couple of other kinds of examples. Take the polynomials of degree less than or equal to 5. Uh, let's take this to be our space v. And for w, let's take the polynomials of degree uh, less than or equal to 4. Is that a subspace? Well, let's see. If you add two polynomials of degree less than or equal to 4, it's still degree less than or equal to 4. This is clearly a subspace. So let's look in R3. What are, what are all of the possible subspaces of R3? Well, there's the zero vector alone. And we've already seen all of R3. Whenever you have a vector space, you can take the whole thing. That's a subspace in a sort of trivial way. And so those are both sort of boring examples. What, what's intermediate? Well, you can take any line through the origin. Or you can take any plane containing the origin. And those are all examples of subspaces of R3. Let's draw them here. So here, I'll draw this line in red. Here's the origin in red, a line. Uh, in R3, you can take uh, a plane. And you can also take all of R3. And those are all of the possibilities. A point, a line, a plane, or all of R3. And in each case, it has to contain uh, the origin. So that's the general situation. Uh, subspaces are very rigid. There's, there's not a lot of them. There, there are only a couple of possibilities. And here they're illustrated for R3. OK, so let me conclude by stating the basic fact about subspaces. This is really implicit in everything I was just saying, but I want to bring it to the foreground. Suppose you have a vector space V and a subspace W. So you have this subset W, and these two operations, addition, scalar addition, and multi uh, vector addition and multiplication, um, they're coming from V. 
but they apply to W, and W is a, is a vector space in its own right. The, the main point being that this, this set W is closed under these operations. If you add two vectors in W, you stay in W. That's the definition of a subspace. And that makes this thing a vector space. Why? Well, it's supposed to, this operation is supposed to satisfy a bunch of properties, but it does. For example, the fact that addition is commutative, you already knew that because that holds in V. So the fact is that if you take a vector space and a subspace, the subspace is automatically a vector space in its own right.